All right, so I'm Vilar Manchon. I'm the uh, head of AI in Roku, a st TV streaming platform for those of you who might not know it. And I'm going to talk about language technologies. So in just, instead of just giving the definitions of the kind of language technologies that you can find in the market today, and they kind of, I've gone a little farther ahead and talked about the impact that they have and things that could be achieved and how that could be good or bad, uh, hoping to open the conversation already for, for some of the later uh, moments. So, um, first of all, I'd like to start with virtual assistants. Why? Because that's what I do, so it's a selfish kind of beginning. But beyond the selfishness, it's because it's a very comprehensive bundle of technologies that come together for a purpose. And many of these technologies are very different uh, and require different levels of performance, different levels of data, different levels of everything. So starting with speech recognition, uh, for those of you who might not know what that is, is just translating basically audio, the voice, what he, a human is saying into a string of words. Natural language understanding actually implies understanding at some point, even though with machine learning today, that's part of the, uh, that's part of the discussion that we're having. Are we really understanding the language? Or are we just establishing correlations between what you see and what you think that ro the role that that particular string of word plays in that particular moment in time. Dialogue management. So if you want to have a conversation, then you need to have a, a sense of turn taking. Whose turn to speak it is and how do I relate the conversation, the information that we just exchange to make sense uh, about what uh, I said before, but also what's coming uh, in terms of what we both know, the, both parties in that interaction. Natural language generation. Well, once I've made sense of whatever it is that we're talking about, and I've decided what the course of action is, I need to communicate with you. So I need to generate something that the human being can understand. Generating whatever the task, whatever the message, whatever the information, in a natural language sort of way. So that's natural language generation. I need to construct a grammatically uh, sensible sentence or, or uh, output. Speech synthesis. When, if I'm speaking to you, then generating it and writing it down is not enough. So I need to be able to generate voice. Uh, multimodality and multimodal multitasking. So if you go beyond just voice and text, think about a more comprehensive virtual assistant that can actually see, sense, and knows about other things beyond what you're telling this virtual assistant. So if I say something like, show me that, or open the blinds on that window, that virtual assistant would literally have to know what I'm pointing at to make sense of what I'm saying. So beyond language is the interaction of all these inputs and context, uh, context uh, modalities that we have to fuse together to make sense of you know, what the actual intent is in the context that is happening. And beyond all this functional intelligence that I'm describing, that you have the social and emotional intelligence part of it, because we human beings are needy creatures. And in order to place trust on a semi-intelligent entity that plays a role in our lives, we needed to have some kind of emotion attached to that, uh, or we'll attribute it anyhow. So you have the personality detection, that is our ability to, through the language that you as a user as, are using, detecting what your personality type is, or personality generation. Now, I want, say, my virtual assistant to be happy, fresh, juvenile, um, nasty, uh, you name it. Whatever personality you want to endorse, the way you achieve that is to get through language. The definition of the persona and self, again, goes against the concept of trust. Who are you? Where do you come from? And what do you know? The inferred intelligence is not only what you're telling me, but giving all these sources of information, then understanding how you are adding one and two and three steps beyond what I'm actually conveying to you in that particular message and how you are adding uh, that information to yet give a, a more intelligent step. And then attunement, which is more defined in the sense of being consistent in your behavior so that the expectations of the user that's interacting with this entity is not mismatched. I'm going to have to speed up because otherwise I'm going to run out of time. And in terms of virtual assistants, and there are some issues there that bring to discussion, like the presence in all, hours of our, in all areas of our lives. So if you think of Alexa, Google Home, Cortana, and these virtual assistants, they're in your house, they're in your car, they're in your office, they could be anywhere, so they know a lot about you. The data ownership, 
and management. Who owns that data? How much of that data are you sharing? You're sharing more data than you realize. Not only what you're saying, but in how you're saying, when you're saying it, who you're saying it to, the tone that you're using when you're saying it. Learning and unlearning behaviors. If we think about machine learning, then it's learning by observation. Now, once a, a pattern is observed, then how do I tell you I don't like that, I don't want that, that's incorrect. So, and learning behaviors and the ability to communicate with your, your agent to, to tell them to do something different, right? And the concept of agency. So when I have an assistant say, Alexa, on behalf of whom is Alexa or Cortana giving me recommendations? On behalf of Amazon? On behalf of Telepizza, Uber, or Pizza Hut, who's actually hired Alexa to provide the service? or in my best interest, because I'm actually the one using the virtual assistant. So whose best interest is in the mind of the virtual assistant when providing those recommendations? And then, of course, trust, delegation, transparency, and explainability. And beyond the world of virtual assistants, there are other areas of impact that are also extremely interesting. You've probably all heard about language translation, how Google has managed to do a real-time interpretation, so you get your device and you can actually get your language interpreted on the spot. The uh, questions of social media and fake news, how do you use language analysis to detect what something, you know, what news could be or could not be real? The, the detection of predatory behaviors in social media, so you can think about teenagers and children using social media to communicate and then pedophiles pretending to be children and luring them into doing things they shouldn't be doing. So how can you use language analysis to detect the situation, prevent them and do something about it? Which brings me again to the philosophical part of that, the legal part of that, and all the uh, different issues that arise out of that. Detection of bullying, orchestrated uh, attacks, influences, sentiment analysis, campaigns. And I'm running out of time and air. <laughs> to be, <laughs> Take another to be, minute, it's okay. <laughs> to say everything. Yeah, no, have, um, an, in have terms another of, minute. Go so ahead. Just a few more seconds. Yes. Uh, in terms of language analysis, like I said before, there are companies today that can actually use the conversations that you're having with, say, your facilities company, your telco, to determine your profile. Who are you as a person? How far can I get away with saying, offering you things? Can I sell you? cross-sell you, upsell you? Are you someone who gets easily upset? Creating a profile about you, and you don't know where that profile is going. So that could actually potentially affect a job application, a mortgage application, a university application, your ability to be insured, your ability to make financial decisions that are appropriate, and therefore people judging you, company services entities beyond your control, judging a user based on information that you have no control over. And other applications of uh, language technologies are the document analysis and categorization, the use of language to help education, to make it accessible and easier for um, those who cannot access education the way we normally do now, and democratize education in that sense, and of course do far further research and put at the uh, at the reach of experts who are not necessarily experts on AI, the possibility of using language to use AI to develop that research further without having to become an expert in AI. In other words, abstracting the complexity of AI through language to empower others to use AI and, and you know, grow faster and further. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you.